Revising Your Experiences with Others. Today's conversation is based on the last conversation we had in which we discussed a very important book and referring to working with our imagination at the end of the night. And subtly, we were discussing the concept of revision. The idea being, how do you want to experience your journey as far as how you want to experience your life, both to the destination as well as the destination? Now that stated, we have the opportunity every day to practice what Neville Goddard refers to as revision, which is the ability to go into our imagination, just like how we described in the last video, and imagine how we relate to others, circumstance, or whatever, in a way that would be ideal. We do this at the end of the night because at the end of the night, before falling asleep, we have the opportunity to do it. Many of us may take 30 minutes or 60 minutes to fall asleep. Or we could consciously go to bed a little earlier to perform this exercise. And the recognition is that what is happening throughout our day is we are creating from our vision as well as we are recreating from our past. What we want is a harmonious journey to the destination. And the journey is riddled with aspects, beliefs, ideas, different assumptions of how we believe reality to work that play out as theater when it comes to relating with circumstance and environment. If we change how we associate to people, environment, circumstance, and information during revision, then we will change how we experience them in the days to follow. So this conversation came about really upon reflection further on this James Allen quote from As a Man Thinketh. He says, man has to but write himself to find that the universe is right. And during the process of putting himself right, he will find that as he alters his thoughts towards things and other people, things and other people will alter towards him. Now, this is very much parallel to one of my favorite concepts from Neville Goddard, which is everyone is you pushed out. And the idea behind it is we change how we relate to people based on how we believe them to be. And we'll notice that how we relate to them will change, as in what we say when we communicate with them, what they say when they communicate with us, how they relate to us, how we relate to them. The change happens within. He, now, what he's referring to is primarily what he brought up here in one of his other lectures. So let's discuss this. He says, now we will go back to the second of Genesis. It is said, And God placed man in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Now when you read the story, you think it happened thousands of years ago. I've come to tell you, it is now. You are now in the Garden of Eden, and you think you are shut out or banished. You are in it. And the garden is your mind. But you need, like every gardener, you need pruning shears. For you have slept. As you are told in the second chapter, having slept, weeds have appeared in the garden and the weeds are revealing themselves by the conditions and circumstances of life. For your garden is always projecting itself on the screen of space. And you can see by looking carefully at your world what you allow to grow in the garden of God. But you have a mission. You have a purpose. It is not necessarily to amass a fortune. You can do it if you want to. It is not to be famous. It is not to be some mighty power. As stated, you could do those things if you would like to. But fundamentally, he states, simply to tend to the garden of God. That's your purpose. You are placed in the garden to dress it and to keep it that only the lovely things grow in the garden of God. So the idea behind it is you have a vision. And this conversation came as a result of a handful of discussions I've had with a number of my clients regarding their teams on their business and entrepreneurial journey. So we'll relate back to those discussions. Now, they already know where they're going. The client knows where they're going, the destination. The team knows where they're going, the destination. They're clear on it. Now, what happens is the journey. Day to day, they interact with each other. The client and the teams, the leadership, the prospects, the clients, the vendors, 
all those that are involved in the business interact with each other. What is being played out from our observation is the theater of what is in the mind. Our beliefs, our assumptions, our interpretation, our ideas, our perspectives, our philosophies are being played out as theater to reflect what's within. Now, based on what has been reflected, and we'll go through the step-by-step -step process of applying it to these applications or any other applications when it relates to others, based on what's being played out, we can alter this theater by changing the concept of self within and the attributes that make up the concept of self, essentially how we relate to others. So he states, always hear and accept as true of others that which you would desire for yourself. In so doing, you are building heaven on earth. So consider your organization or your team as your own microcosm of heaven on earth, which will further expand out into your relationships and other areas of life. We always are presented with opportunities to practice this every single day. The key is to accept as true of others that which you would desire for yourself. Or as he states here, the warning was given to man in the famous golden rule. Do unto others that which you would have them do unto you. So, at the end of the day, we reflect back on our experiences and we ask ourselves, where were we in violation of this golden rule? Where was it played out in theater? And how can we represent those same experiences in our mind's eye, knowing that when we do so in our imagination, it will impress the subconscious mind and changes will occur as a result? What would it look like if it was a reflection of the ideal? What would those scenes look like? And as a result of those identification of those attributes that we would call disharmony on the journey, we can go through the process of pruning shears of revision and imagine it to have gone in an ideal way, one that reflects love or, as stated, do unto others that which you would have them do unto you. He says you may desire something for yourself or you may desire for another. If your desire concerns another, make sure that the thing desired is acceptable to that other. So as stated, you have a goal, you have a team, and the goal is to, in harmony, move towards the vision. Thus, it is acceptable to the other to experience harmony, knowing that all of us are doing the same thing, which is tending to the garden of our mind. If we recognize that all of us, which are expressions of our own mind within, is experiencing reality from the same way we are interpreting it from within, then we change the interpretations within that are in relation to the golden rule, which is how they really want to be represented. Now, if you're building a business and you've got a team, you're going to hear your team talk about their goals, their aspirations, and how they want to contribute to your business growth. You're probably going to speak with them about the business growth and the key word is harmony. So it's to understand what they really want, what they really want to achieve, and relating it over to your vision in your imagination day to day on the journey. Different circumstances, different experiences show up on the journey. And this is why he was saying, it's not to be famous, although you could do it if you'd like to. It's not to be some mighty power, although you could do it if you'd like to. Because all of those are stories. And what is being played out on the theater is also a story. So it's what you want and also what's showing up on the journey. Now, based on what's showing up, we can change it using this process here. So what I did was I went through his document of the pruning shears of revision, and I've taken it and I put his own words here and broken it down into seven steps. So as he states here, prune your imagination by withdrawing your attention from all unlovely and destructive ideas and concentrating on the idea you wish to attain. Now, we do this at the end of the night. So prior to going to sleep, ideally, if you journal or you could recall the events, you would reflect and say, what was unlovely in my thoughts towards the other person, in how they related to me and how I related to them and how the theater had played out, and say, what would it look like if it was ideal 
and work with our imagination from that perspective. He says, I do it by the pruning shears of revision. I bring him before my mind's eye, and I congratulate him on his good fortune because he is now gainfully employed. So he's given an example. I allow him to accept my congratulations because I do not see a man unemployed. I see him employed, and he knows he is in my mind's eye, for in that state I have pruned him from the unemployed state and once more reshaped the branch that has grown in the garden of God. So here are some attributes that may show up on your journey, which I pulled from David Hawkins' Power versus Force. Accepting versus rejecting, allowing versus controlling, approving versus critical, enlivening versus exhausting, flexible versus rigid. So if our team or members of our team appear as rejecting, controlling, critical, exhausting, rigid, we could represent them in our imagination, in our mind's eye, as if it played out that way during the day from the perspective of accepting, allowing, approving, enlivening, and flexible. Now this is how we do it. At the end of my day, I review the day. I don't judge it, I simply review it. So you can pull up your journal, or you could lay back and use the process outlined in the previous video, and you can bring into your imagination a review of what has happened throughout the day by not judging it, because we don't want to identify with it. We just want to review our experiences throughout the day. And he says, I look over the entire day, all the episodes, all the events, all the conversations, all the meetings. So everything that happened on the journey that we would say ideal or not ideal. We bring them into awareness, conscious awareness. He says, then as I can see it clearly in my mind's eye, I could rewrite it. I rewrite it and make it conform to the ideal day I wish I had experienced. So you could take a few of those scenes or a bunch of those scenes and construct a scene that represents perhaps these attributes. Let's take accepting versus rejecting. So say you had a conversation that played out during the day and this conversation was not from a place of harmony, let's say. It was a conflict. Now, as a result of this conversation, you felt that there was a disconnect between you two. So you recognize then that you want to feel more accepting when you have conversations with them. So you would maybe imagine a scene that would be conversational, where they would have a conversation with you in which they are accepting you and thanking you for sharing your perspectives, as well as because we are applying the golden rule and we reflect it and we look at it in our imagination as a conversation that we are accepting them. The same is to be said about allowing versus controlling. If you have somebody on your team or your people in your life that always seem to try to control you, we can have a conversation with them in our imagination through the revision that implies that they are accepting of you, allowing you to have freedom. A conversation works really well, so imagining a conversation. Or... If it's a scenario, let's say a scenario showed up in which it was very exhausting. The way you were going about the day-to-day -day experience with your team member was exhausting. And the project seemed stressful. Instead, in your imagination, you visualize having a joyous day full of creativity, joyous expression, and harmony, and feeling enlivened by the experience. These are some examples. He says, I take scene after scene and rewrite it, revise it. And having revised my day, then in my imagination, I relive that day, the revised day, and I do it over and over in my imagination until the seeming imagined state begins to take onto me the tones of reality. So we're repeating it a few times or however times needed till we recognize the feeling that that is how it actually happened. He says, it seems that it's real, that I actually did experience it. And I have found from experience that these revised days, if really lived, will change my tomorrow. So because we are governed by our subconscious self-image, what we're doing is we are altering our self-image to be a reflection of our vision. And we're doing this by combining that everyone is you pushed out, recognizing that how we relate to others on the journey is revealing how we interpret ourselves. So we change in our imagination, the scene of how we thought it played out into how it ideally would have played out. 
and through the repetition, it impresses the subconscious mind. And as a result, we'll notice how we relate to those individuals the next day will change. He says, when I meet people tomorrow that today disappointed me, they will not tomorrow. For in me, I have changed the very nature of that being. And having changed him, he bears witness tomorrow of the change that took place within me. So this is happening within ourselves. So as James Allen says, and we'll combine this with the golden rule, man has but to right himself to find that the universe is right. And Neville stated, the warning was given to man in the famous golden rule. Do unto others that which you would have them do unto you. So we want to be treated in our day-to-day -day dealings in a way that we treat others. Now, if there's some confusion in this, then we want to work with this in our imagination and by changing the concept of self, recognizing that we are representing the self-image that we also want to see others represent. That's what we're doing. We embody it within and it externalizes as them representing that image. Now, this is an ongoing journey. This is why he says that's your purpose. You are placed in the garden to dress it and to keep it, that only the loving things grow in the garden of God. Now, this takes practice because we might not have been conscious by doing this on a day-to-day -day basis when we have the opportunity to do this at the end of the night, knowing that when we do it at the end of the night, it has a higher likelihood of impressing the subconscious mind. We've been speaking about this. We call this state akin to sleep. As a result of working with this in our imagination, we notice that people alter to reflect. As James Allen stated, as he alters his thoughts toward things and other people, things and other people will alter towards him. Because what's being changed is the concept of self. What is the concept of self being changed to? The true self, which is one that is reflective of love or representation of the golden rule, which is why he states, you may desire something for yourself, or you may desire for another. If your desire concerns another, make sure that the thing desired is acceptable to the other. So we are imagining them to be in their ideal. And we are imagining them to be in their ideal by constructing a scene in our imagination that would represent the ideal. And we play it even though the event played out differently, which was in conflict to the ideal, we still maintain true to the assumption and play the scene out again and again, knowing that most of our experiences is generated by the subconscious. So we're changing the subconscious self-image. And so finally, step number seven, it is my duty to take this garden and really make it a garden by daily using the pruning shears of revision. So just like any garden that you would prune and you would care for, we tend to the garden of mind from the same perspective. In grand summary, it is looking at the different events that happen throughout the day that was not in harmony to the ideal vision and changing it in our imagination by playing out the theater in our imagination from an ideal perspective of how we would relate to others. And since the ideal perspective is an embodiment of love, then we play out the loving interactions in our mind or the loving theater in our mind and we'll notice that we'll be more at ease as we fall asleep in that feeling of ease. Not only the feeling of ease, but the imaginary scenes will go in and impress on the subconscious mind. And over the course of the night, it will do its thing. And then we'll notice that reality changes and how we relate to others change more so the next day. And we continue this journey until we bring a higher degree of harmony, bringing forth what we desire from a place of harmony. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.